Hello, and welcome back to episode 19 of Sherlock Holmes, chapter 1. I'm Vic, and you're watching yet another Let's Play channel. And I almost forgot about our weirdo friend, Ol Vogel. What do you have to say for yourself, chum? Werner, are you alright? Oh, yes, yes. Everything's fine. In fact, it's something of a family reunion. My brother spent quite some time in this place himself. You should not be here. I told the police everything I knew, but they refused to let you go. They require proof to free you. Ha! <laughs> what did you expect? The mighty Sherlock Holmes swans in, tells the officers what to think, and the world obeys? Of course not. Anyway, I struck a deal with the constable, and I've got a free hand in the investigation. I find proof to solve the case for him. He obtains files about my mother's death for me. Well done. If one has the power or will and can act, then one must. I wonder, suppose you couldn't get the proof to your truth. Would you tell a lie to the guard that enabled my freedom, knowing my innocence? Would that not be just? No. There are lines I will not cross, Werner. I will do my best to secure your release, but with proof, not deception. Really? How many white lies have you told on this island? Why not for me? Why not another? That is absurd. I can resolve this without compromises. Do not give up hope. What evidence am I going to show him? I'm not supposed to know anything about this. <laughs> You're not supposed to, but do you? I'm not supposed to know anything about this. I... I... I'm not impressed with what you're supposed to know. Yellow pro all oh, right, that's the thing that I ignored. I don't I don't think I can tell you anything about this. I don't yeah. think I can tell you I don't you think you can tell me anything about, about anything. I don't know why I'm even showing you evidence. Let me see what All right, John. Let's go find, uh, what's his name? Nope, I don't want to talk to you yet. I want to leave. Oh. The incidents at Copello's company. No. No. Yes. No. Yes. Oh, come on. My curiosity has been piqued by talk that Basilio Copello, the owner of the famous Armor Copello Home Security Company, has been arrested. His situation is quite peculiar. A man named Nicolo Detti has been found dead inside a safe in Basilio's store. Basilio claims innocence, but the evidence is against him. He's being held at the holding cells. In the police. Let's pretend to be cops, eh? We can just stand around and look confused. I, I don't know where you are, John, uh, but I've been pretending to be in the police for some time now. I'm not sure why that cropped up again toward what I assume is close to the end of the story. Can I change? I'm tired of wearing this. I miss my armor. Good. Can I wear... Can I wear the mask with my gunslinger armor? Yeah, why not? We'll go with that for a while. I need to find out where What's-His-Name's house is. Do I have anything that tells me... Nope. I should tell Constable Oswald to question him as a suspect. Fine. I thought I was going to go find him at his house, but... Alright, so I guess we're doing this one. Have you considered Mr. Santos Pinchetti as a suspect? The snitch? Have you seen him? I mean, my breath could knock him down. What's so special about him? As a major domo, he has keys that open all the rooms, including the one to the crime scene. 
could have testified only to circumvent suspicion, don't you think? We need to question him. Right. I'll send our men to fetch him. Stay here. Well, he really is the Lestrade standing. They brought him in, Mr. Holmes. Here's the key to interrogation room number seven. Mr. Pinchetti didn't even resist, our men said. Thank you. Well, it was wise of him to not resist, since the Popo would have just beat him up anyway. Alright. Number seven. Seven. Hello, boyo. Mr. Pinchetti, a pleasure to meet you. I'm Sherlock Holmes. I'm helping Constable Oswald. I've already told him everything I know. I'm only a witness. Uh, everything's in my report. And I've read it. You forgot to mention that you hold the keys to the room where Fabio was found. I need only to find if the crime was intentional. But I need to return to my duties. I doubt the house will fall without you, Mr. Pinchetti. Just be still for a few seconds. So that I can look at you. I'm particularly interested in your hands. Why why can't I look at your hands? That's strange. Stepped in blood, did we? Still don't understand. Oh, what is this? Psoriasis or allergy? I, I don't know. Do I care? I don't know. Is your greedy nature responsible for the lack of taste and attention to your appearance? The cheap makeup, shabby and dyed clothes? How do you explain those, Major Domo? The means to practice my profession are limited. I'm sorry you noticed it, sir. The party's overshadowed your state. You are lucky Kurt Manchios's attention was concentrated elsewhere. In a decent household, you would be asked to leave for far less. Yes, his attention was undoubtedly concentrated on something other than my appearance. But one detail stands out on your dirty rags and shoes. The drops of blood. Oh, that. I don't know anything about it. Mm-hmm. Well, otherwise you would have cleaned it up. Did you know Fabio? Uh, not personally. He was a frequent guest, and cleaning the mess after his performances was tedious. Mr. Manchios always had a role for him, and mainly the leading one. The parties were always some um, Fabio-centric. And Matista? Was she as popular as her partner? Don't tell her I said this, but I do not think so. Mr. Manchios hired her only because Fabio refused to work without her. Mr. Manchios used to see her as a worker. She was tasked with entertaining the guests, unlike Fabio, who could pick and choose. Hmm. Is that all that you're going to tell me? Please let me out. It is. I'm surprised that we didn't get more there. We do have plenty to work with, though. I don't think any of those three are going to line up, so let's look at what we found here. Pinchetti missed the blood splatter. Pinchetti accidentally stepped in blood. So 
So if he accidentally discovered the crime scene, all he would have to do is open the door, look upon the scene, and then leave. There's no reason for him to participate in any bloodstains. So I'm leaning toward that one for the moment. Affect this one, yeah, then those, those, why would that conflict with the ritual being a cover? Alright, well, it looks like in any case we're not ready to accuse anyone just yet. Which surprises me. Can we, can we not combine any of those? Yeah. Oh. Santos, my hopeful slug, you begged me to include you in my will, so I did. Here's my latest revision of the will. Kurt. The text of the will under the note. Santos Pinchetti, the majordomo of the Manchios Mansion, receives a jar of mustache wax and a salt lamp that he might remember his caring employer, Kurt Manchios. <laughs> well, that sounds like motive, doesn't it? I recognize the key from the altar room among these. Let's have a talk about that letter. Hmm? Mr. Manchios says that you begged him to be included in the heritage. Isn't that a little extreme, even for a major domo? He's not only my employer, he's my uncle. And I'm his next of kin. The only one. Mr. Manchios flatly refuses to pay a family member. All I have to do is repay his so-called love. Cleaning up the filth after perverts and decadence. He's imprisoned me. The best I can hope for is a new broom. That's why I wanted to have my part of the inheritance. Is it that bad? You have a roof above your head, a salary, and the status of a major domo. For God's sake. I'm forced to dye and stitch my threadbare clothes, and the holes in my shoes are painful. I'm ashamed every time a guest looks at me closely. Why do you think your uncle treats you this way? My mother, my uncle's sister, had me illegitimately. He died, and I was given the surname of one of the maids. But you are entitled to some of the money that belongs to your family. He thinks not. I was not responsible for my mother's death. I work hard, and he pays me nothing. I feed on the leftovers. While he wastes our estate's property on decadent parties, he paid Fabio handsomely and showered him with expensive gifts for their disgusting relationship. Mm-hmm. Well, that's a couple more things for us to connect. Really? Mm hmm. I don't, I don't understand why these don't connect. Maybe just because there isn't a conclusion to draw. And what is the deal with Vogel's letter? Hmm? Did I overlook some stuff in the other people's rooms? Did they have possessions that I need to look at? Where's your letter? Oh, maybe I can ask him about it. Do I not have uh, evidence for that? Really? Why don't I? Why? Let me see what I can do. Why don't I have an evidence for that? She doesn't have any belongings. 
he doesn't have any belongings. Why the hell not? I've read the letter about your will. A harsh method of ridiculing Santos. I doubt he will use mustache wax when he wears no mustache to begin with. Where did you get it? Is the slug here? Tell him. I shouldn't have to provide for him. He's a grown man who shouldn't sit on his uncle's neck. He conceives himself as my only heir. And who is he to you? He's a leech on my aging body. He has only added problems to my life since the death of his mother. I fail to see why you made him your major domo. He needed to know his place, so I taught him. Hmm. I can't wrap my head around such a tragedy at my party. And that was the only thing that you're interested in talking about. I know I can handle the news. I don't even know what that means. So what then? I don't have like a I ought to investigate this thing, do I? No. Oh, it was just bloody because it was the default highlight. <laughs> why is there... What is this and why can't I interact with it? And what ought I be doing here? Should I talk to the peoples about the key, maybe? Please let me out. Oh, the peoples aren't even going to talk to me about anything anymore. Well, maybe you will talk to me. Nope, not that one. This one. He's already spoken to it. This this end is feeling rather I don't think dead. I can tell you anything about this. I'm not supposed to know anything about this. Yeah, I really... I'm not supposed to know anything about this. Well, that's just a lie. I mean, that reports the you. I'm not supposed to know anything about this. Okay. Uh, time for a little pause while I do some more in-depth poking around. Okay, so I remembered that there was an evidence room. Uh, even though they left the evidence with the major domo guy, uh, maybe there's some more evidence Good over I, here. Your ticket, please, if you want me to help you. How about I just show you a whole bunch of unrelated crap? What do you think about that? I'd like to check the evidence from this case. And who are you? Oswald sent me. I'm a consulting detective. His partner, then. Let me see. Ah, oh, a ritual murder. What a bunch of degenerates. Wait a second, I'll bring it to the table. Oh, and we're just going to look at it right here, okay. So we got some more keys. All the keys of the mansion on one golden ring. We can assume that those are the hosts. Yeah, there it is. A heavily perfumed handkerchief with the initials KM in the corner. Kurt Manchios. It's a miracle this ruby hasn't tempted anyone. Is your mind unsound? You can't control your bitterness, not around me anyway. For me, it's too great a risk to ignore that kind of behavior. I can be, speak, and play with anyone I choose. I'm not another Matista. You pay me, but you haven't bought me. Of course, I'll keep all your generous donations, even though they hardly compensate for your last terrible outburst. I'm leaving you, although Matista will still be around. Found in Vogel's evidence box. Hmm. Not the time for privacy. An emergency kit for boredom. <laughs> Is there nothing? No, there we go. Okay. Werner's personal sketchbook. 
And... A handcrafted charm that contains hair and nail clippings. Interesting. A key to the altar room. And a second key. How about... Yeah, there we go. That's not for bedtime reading. Well, maybe not for your bedtime reading. This ex libris belongs to Mancio's library. The police found this occult book in Matista's bag during the arrest. According to the ex libris, the tome was taken from Mr. Mancio's collection. It contains illustrations and descriptions of a ritual similar to the crime scene. Prepare the naked body of a recently deceased object of interest. Draw symbols of Mars and Venus to enhance the power you possess. To force, to the, use the force of male and female nature. Pierce his heart with a golden dagger to be rid of the blood that does not love you. Draw a symbol representing your love. While waiting for the resurrection, recite the charm. The book describes a ritual similar to the one performed in the altar room. Thank you, officer. If one was performed. No? No? Really? What was that? The letter may have been for Manchios. Hmm. Well, that's interesting. Come on. Alright, well, maybe. Maybe the peoples will have some more things to say to me now. I've decided that this is my Inquisitor outfit. Oh! Hang on. I'm not wearing the right. Whatever. It'll be my Inquisitor outfit when I have my armor. I might have picked the wrong one when I was changing costumes. Hey, lady. What do you have to say about this ritual book? This book, The Power of Love, Blood, and Mandrake, what do you hope to achieve? To learn more about the invisible strengths that govern us. Occultism is real. The master who fell that night when Fabio and I escaped, I made him fall. I cast a spell on him and it worked. Or was it a coincidence? The universe is really so lazy. If you say so. Got anything to say about this? Could Fabio have written this letter to Kurt Manchos? Oh, that could be. I never thought Mr. Manchios could make Fabio that angry, though. What do you mean? Well, Fabio wanted to disassociate from Mr. Manchios. Clients who are in love are both a blessing and a curse. But Fabio was here tonight. Money. In our line of work, we can't afford to turn down clients who pay as well as Kurt Manchios. Was Fabio afraid of Mr. Manchios? Not at all. The old toad wouldn't dare to do more than sweet talk and touching. Talk can be forgotten, and touching washed away. Do you practice occult rituals? For protection? For fortune? To wash away the ugliness of the world? Sometimes to survive. I have the gift, and I'm learning to use it better. Did you use your gift on Fabio? I only used white magic. Love charms lately. Fabio became so distant. I just wanted him to be with me. But I suppose I'm not as skilled as I thought. Okay. And what do you have to say about these new things that I found? I've no idea about that. There is undeniable evidence that you were the original recipient of this letter. What are you talking about? Is it addressed to me? Your protege wanted a fresh start, it seems. This is sufficient to charge you. Me? Hurt my star? Are you insane that you would accuse me of such a thing? He did not consider himself as yours. Since you deny everything, let's move on. 
Do you have any idea as to how the letter could have ended up in Mr. Vogel's pocket? You were the detective. Perhaps he took it from Fabio. Werner was a little high. He, he was more than a little high, I think. Do you recognize this book? Could Matista have borrowed it from your library? She didn't ask me. How ungrateful. The things described in the book were inspiration for the rituals you performed? Do you really believe that blood, symbols, and incantations can resurrect the dead? They are just eerie tales with a mix of occultism and voodoo. My rituals are a stage to show some of the forbidden pleasures. And I guess now it's just Vogel that we talk to. Oh, we could talk to Il Major Domo. Why your evidence isn't kept with the rest of the evidence. Please let me out. I do not know, and neither do you. All right, buddy. I have reason to believe that the intended recipient of the incriminating letter may have been Kurt Manchios. Well, that makes sense. Too bad I can't remember how I came to possess it. Though I did spend quite some time with Mr. Manchios during the party. Unfortunately, even with an answer, that may still not be enough to clear you with the police. But fear not. I will persevere. I hope your attempt to put things straight will make up for... You being on a bender. Touché. I don't think I can tell you anything about this. But he's still talking to me, so there must be something else that he can tell me something about. I can't follow you here. I don't think I can tell you anything about this. I'm not supposed to know anything about this. I don't think I can tell you anything about this. I can't follow you here. I have learned who told the police about the crime. It was Santos Pinchetti. Do I know him? The major domo of the manor. He cleans up after you. Well, then he does his job perfectly. All but invisible. I couldn't tell you the first thing about him. And we have three whole new things. Look at that. Does it... Does it really matter? I don't think it really matters. And if I change it? Okay. But if we do this... Then we don't have an answer. Still got stuff here. Matista may have used a ritual on Fabio. Uh, that, that that ritual is not associated with bringing back feelings. So let's let's go this direction. So if we instead do this one, now we can blame Matista. So I know I blamed Matista reflexively previously. I don't think that actually squares. Um, we didn't know that. Well, yeah, we don't. We don't know that 
she knew that Fabio was planning to leave, or that she was go he was going to leave her behind. And also, this so-called ritual murder, um, it, it doesn't square with the purpose that we're imputing on it. So I just don't think that works. So now it's between Bingetti and Mangios. And... If Mangios knew that Fabio was leaving, then we might say that that looks like motive. And otherwise, I think Pinchetti's disgust with the relationship and anger at being spurned by the person that he sees as his, uh, what do you call the reverse of an heir? Whatever. <sighs> yeah, I'm having a lot of fun. Can you tell? Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, anyway, I think that, that probably counts as motive. So it does seem like it's down to those two. That's all the clues used up and all the clues found. So it's down to us just making a decision. You know what? Uh, I'm on Manchios. Um, that's a pretty harsh letter. And uh, he does seem like an emotionally fragile dude. So I'm going to go with, I'm going to go with crime of passion on this one. And now the question is, which moral judgment do I want to make here? I mean, certainly, he did stage the crime as a ritual to blame Matista, and he did plant the letter in Vogel's pocket. I feel like I feel like this is silly. I mean, we just heard a speech from Sherlock about how he applies himself uh, in the area of his mandate, and then he washes his hands of the courts. And so, making this judgment of a prison sentence is enough before he deserves to be hanged. Um, this is not a judgment that Sherlock would take based on his own testimony. And we have no reason to discount that testimony. I feel like this is more consistent than with what we know of the killing. Right? There was a. It, was, it seems to me that what happened is, is Fabio handed him that letter, maybe in the smoking room. Maybe he just confronted Fabio in the smoking room, lashed out, and, and Fabio was unexpectedly dead. Um, so we're going to go with that. Yeah. And we have overrun our time. So come back and see me again in episode this one plus one for the accusation and the moving on to the next case. Talk to you soon.